Previously, we learned how to create and run a basic React application using Weed. Now, we're going to dig into the project structure to understand what makes everything tick when we run our application. I've got the Hello World project open in VS Code. And at the root level, we can see three folders and seven files. Let's break this down one by one, starting with the files. First, we have package.json, which tells us what tools and libraries we need to build a React app, also called as dependencies. In our case, we need React itself and React DOM, which helps React work with web browsers. The major version is 19, but the minor version can vary depending on when you're watching this course. At the time of recording, the latest version is 19.2, but we templates sometimes take a little time to catch up to the latest React release. If you want to make sure you're running the most recent version, you can update React, React DOM, and the React type definitions by running the following command in your project folder. So in a new terminal, but within the Hello World project folder, run the command npm install react at latest, react dom at latest, at types slash react at latest, and at types slash react dom at latest. Basically, the four packages you see in dependencies and dev dependencies. They're currently 19.1. And if we run the command and check the file, we can see they've been updated to 19.2. React, React DOM, as well as the type definitions. So this will ensure everything is up to date and you're learning with the latest stable React release. Now the package.json file also contains scripts, which are like shortcuts for common tasks. Think of them as commands you can run to do something. We have dev, which starts our development server, build, which creates a version of our application ready for production, preview, which lets us test that built version locally, and lint, which runs a tool called eslint. Eslint is a tool that looks for common mistakes and suggests ways to write better code. Both wheat and eslint are required only during development and listed as dev dependencies in the file. Next up are configuration files. We've got wheat.config.js to configure wheat and eslint.config.js, which tells eslint what rules to follow when checking our code for mistakes. We then have index.html, and this is the only HTML file you will have in your React application. Since we're building single page applications, this is it. The content in your browser might change as the users navigate around, but it's always this same HTML file that gets served up. You typically won't add much code to this file. Maybe some changes in the head tag for things like page titles or meta tags, but definitely not in the body tag. We want React to be in complete control of the UI. And for that purpose, there is one special div tag with ID is equal to root. At runtime, React takes over this div tag and becomes responsible for everything you see on the screen. Make a mental note of this root div tag. We'll be coming back to it in just a moment. There are also a few files we won't focus on much in this course. Packagelock.json, which makes sure everyone gets exactly the same version of our dependencies. Git ignore, which tells Git a tool for tracking code changes which files to ignore, and the readme file, which contains some helpful documentation links. All right, now let's take a look at the different folders. First, we have node modules. This is like a giant toolbox that contains all our dependencies. When we run the command npm install in the terminal, npm, which is the node package manager, downloads all the code we need and stores it here for us to use. This one's git ignored, because it's huge and can be recreated anytime by running the command npm install in your terminal. The second folder is the public folder. It's where all your static assets go, like images, SVGs, and other files that don't need to be processed by Weed. Think of it as a storage room for files that stay exactly as they are. Currently, we have just the one file, weed.svg, that is referenced 
in our index.html file as the fav icon. Finally, we've got the star of the show, the source folder. This is where we will spend most of our time writing code. Inside source, there are several key files. main.jsx, which specifies the root component, which is the app component, and the DOM element that will be controlled by React. The DOM element in our case is the element with ID is equal to root. And if you can recollect, that is the div element we talked about in our index.html file. We also have app.jsx, which contains our main application component, and app.css for styling the app component. There is also index.css for global styles that apply to the entire application and an assets folder that contains the React logo displayed in our app component. We will learn about these individual files as we progress through the course, but let me explain how it all comes together. When you run the command npm run dev, the index.html file is served in the browser. Index.html contains the root DOM node, as well as a script tag that references the main.jsx file. The control enters main.jsx. React DOM then takes the app component and puts it inside the root DOM node. The app component contains the HTML and CSS, which is ultimately displayed in the browser. Finally, Weed's development server watches for changes in these files and automatically updates the browser. That's what happens behind the scenes when you run npm run dev. All right, here's an exercise I encourage you to try. Create a new React project called core concepts and run it using the command npm run dev. Change some text in the app component and see how it updates in the browser. Let me know how it goes in the comment section.